Well, it's midweek um, down here in Team Reflected Towers, and as I'm recording this, I have been editing for ooh, all of, I think, 15 days solid. Yeah, 15 days solid staring at the screen. So, you know, I'm getting out into the real world for a bit. Need a bit of a screen break, it's killing me. <laughs> So yeah, um, come to a few uh, towns just north of Nottingham. Uh, this is Mansfield. This is a lovely park, by the way. God, I love this. Oh, oh yes, we approve. There used to be some sort of chintzy, antique, second-hand kind of shops in a little uh, arcade this way. Uh, shopping arcade, that is. Not the, not the good kind of arcade. Uh, and last time I went to them, they had a load of vintage cameras in. And it's not really the cameras I'm after, it's the actual lenses. I'm going to see if I can, f if they're cheap enough, I'm going to see if I can get some of them and adapt them to the Team Reflector cameras, just to see what they look like, really. Uh, so yeah, that's the, uh, that's the plan today. Why don't you come with me, eh? Da -da -da -da. never actually um I even lived in Mansfield um, back when I was a nurse in a previous life never actually uh, been up with up and close to this uh, clock tower I'd like to film it but there's a major bypass just there um, which I don't think is 30 meters away otherwise I'd be able to film it but wow huh. stairs going all the way up uh, the stone was laid by William Horns Redden, Managing Director of Barringer Wallace and Manners Limited, Mansfield, 6th of June 1919. There you go. Huh. There's even like cliff sides and things here. Must have been an old factory then or something. Interesting. So the batik was... Uh, was a bust for, for lenses and things, but they've got some awesome stuff in there. I just haven't got any money for it. I've got uh, some company money to get lenses with, as long as they're only like a five, uh, seven, six, seven, eight pounds, something like that. Um, I think the only reason she hasn't got, I think the only reason she hasn't got any is because I cleaned her out <laughs> about two, three weeks ago, so she hasn't had any more in since. Apart from that um, big long lens that's uh, on your screen right now. Um, as you can see, it's a lovely lens, but uh, I think not very practical for even, you know, once you get the adapter on there and your speed booster and all that kind of stuff. Uh, not very practical for, you know, filming at least. Great for photos. I imagine it'd look great. Ah, back in the office. Um, yeah, speaking of clearing the lady out. Ta-da! Um, yeah, so this is... Or should I say, these are all the lenses I got from her last week. Um, I guess start biggest to smallest seems to be the way to go for it. Um, this is a beauty, this one. Oh. So this is a Cirrus um, 28-200 um, zoom and macro lens all in one. Pretty cool. Um, where's the f-stop on this? 1.4 to 5.6, so it's quite, quite, um, quite a long range on it. And it's got, I think this is a Pentax mount, just there. Um, and you can get adapter rings for whatever camera you've got. I'll come back to those in a moment. But that's the, uh, that's the zoom. Lovely piece of glass. It weighs a ton. It weighs an absolute ton. It's crazy. Um, that, well, that, that is just the stock lens that comes with any old Canon. So that's the 18-55, but on the front of it, 
is a Niwa Extreme Macro Lens. Just screws onto the front um, and basically to let you get within like a millimetre of like bugs and stuff. Um, whether this would work in video, I'm not quite sure, but I'm, you know, I'm gonna give it a go. Um, that was a couple of quid. So, worth a try, isn't it, really, I suppose? Got that one there, we are. Oh, look at that, yay, hey. It's like I designed the set or something. <laughs> On to the Marexar. Uh, this is a 28mm lens, I think, yeah, 28mm at 2.8, with some lovely clicky apertures and stuff on there. It's great this one, and I think this one is a, yeah again this looks like it's a Pentax kind of mount. Um, which again, all you do on your, whoops, <laughs> when you're not trashing the place. I'll tell you what's weird actually, is the, um, the lens caps actually go on the wrong way around. They actually go on backwards to what they are these days, which is interesting. Um, but yeah, what you need is a lens mount to put it on your camera, which is what we've got here. And this is the um, Holy Grail lens, actually, for a lot of cinematographers, cheap. You know, they're, they, they, they range between five pounds and eight pounds. I think I paid six pounds for this from our, from our good friend in the shop there. This is the Helios um, lens. This is a 44mm version. Now, these are, I believe, Russian uh, lenses originally. Um, and for cinematographers, each one, you can get three of the same lens and they'll all look different. It's, it's, uh, they've got a character of their own and they're lovely. And what I've done here is, for those of you who don't know, I'll put it on some B-roll, but you get, they come, th these Helios lenses come with um, the old style screw mount. And it was actually on, uh, can you see? Yeah, that camera there. Um, but you get these things here. Um, these are about like a tenner each. Um, and you basically get one end that's the back of your lens, and then the other end, in my case, I, I work with Canon, so that's the that's uh, EOS mount, and, uh, and it just converts it. Um, there is some settings in the camera you have to do because like I've got these ones here and it's got like a fake chip in it so that the focus will work once you hit record because um, some of these older ones you have to focus and then hit record and you can't change the focus. Um, they are manual focus obviously but yeah it's weird so this chip kind of fools the, the modern cameras into thinking that there's a focus ring on there and then you can do your thing. Um, but yeah that's all you basically have to do with these. Um, Quite, quite damaged, that's why she gave it me cheap. It's, uh, there's a big dent there, so you're not gonna be able to put any filters on the front of that. Um, I might try and straighten it out and see if we can uh, get it, but wide open. I mean, it's it just goes massive. <laughs> so the bokeh on these, uh, I've never worked with one myself. I've seen other people with them on set and things, and the bokeh on these, like just the character of it is beautiful. You just don't get modern lenses that look like this, uh, apart from the cinema glass of course, but then you're talking 30 odd grand each, so, you know, if you look them up, Helios, that's H-E-L-I-O-S, just put that into uh, eBay, um, and there's, there's, they're 10 to a dozen these days, they're, they're, like I say, they're anywhere between a fiver and a tenner, um, you shouldn't pay more than a tenner with shipping, um, or at least, no, you shouldn't, don't let the market go up, because they're everywhere, these things. But yeah, this is the one I'm looking forward to most actually because I've heard good things about it. Um, and then obviously you can just buy spare lens caps on, on Amazon for a pound each and you just, uh, ta da there you go. <laughs> the only thing I've got is a lens cap, but I've got some like um, stretchy silicon rubber stuff that comes over and there you go. But yeah, that's, that's, that's the one I've been after for a while, that, this Helio, so hopefully I can get it working and make like a little, I don't know, a little sexy b-roll short film kind of a thing with it. Possibly the next BTS vlog from Aberice, uh, because our film is nearing completion. We've got two more blocks of filming. We are filming in Doncaster in a nightclub. Um, this week as I record this, and then uh, two weeks later, we they are all coming down to Nottingham where I am 
to film at Broadview Riding Stables. Big up Broadview by the way, um, really nice people, Keely and everyone else that works down there, Sean, not everyone, lovely peeps. Um, and we're doing a witch burning scene with like horses and like, you know, period cloven F, it's going to be epic. So yeah, maybe when I'm not actually doing the main filming in between takes and, we're, and I'm filming like BTS, maybe I can see if I can use this and see if I can make it look all cinematic. Worth a try, innit? But that's just a crash course on vintage lenses. Um, yeah, get yourself out there and see what's out there. Uh, old antique shops, old collectible shops, uh, you know, eBay and things like that. I like doing it in the wild. It's like when I collect transformers like up there. I like to find them in charity shops because it's kind of cool. You don't know what you're going to get. Sometimes the broken, sometimes they're not. You know, it's to me that adds to the fun. A lot, a lot of people like, yeah, whatever. But, you know, I'm a nerd. <laughs> Hopefully you enjoyed this vlog. Uh, you know what to do with all the likes and stuff. And I'll see you at the next one. Tira. I like to move it, move it, bit, 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 bit.